Hi, it's Tim Stokes here from Profit Transformations and welcome to this webinar replay on how to finish growing your business and set it up to run on autopilot. Who this webinar is for? For business owners sick of working hard year after year after year. Business owners with five staff who want to get off the tools. Business owners who want to take two to 12 month holidays regularly. And business owners wanting more productive and independent employees so that you can step away from your business for weeks or months without worrying about what your employees are doing. And for business owners who want their business to grow, maybe a million or multiple millions of dollars a year while you're working less. My background, I've owned seven businesses since 1983. I've been in business partnerships with four different entrepreneurs in that time. I've invested $120,000 plus in my own education and continue to invest in my own education, learning from the best people I can find in the world. I was invited to be a business coach pilot in 1997 to help pioneer the business coaching industry because back then it was brand new to the marketplace and very few people had heard of it. I've trained 35 business coaches internationally including rookies of the year that hit the ground running and were turning over $250,000 plus in their very first year of business. I've been featured in National Business Magazine 10 times. Here's just some of the covers of magazines that I have been featured in with some extraordinary client outcomes like businesses growing by a thousand percent in five months and increasing the income rapidly and profits in that time frame plus businesses where the owner starts to step away and the business is running without them the contents of the webinar today is the major challenges of businesses on autopilot what are those major challenges and how do you prevent them the critical KPI to reach to be able to be free. Unfortunately, 90% of businesses aren't anywhere near this minimum KPI and they will never be free and will always have to be working in their business because of that. How to be certain your business is operating safely if you're not working in it. Why you need a great team to own an autopilot business and the strategies of how to set one up. I'll talk about that later in the webinar. The seven essential ingredients for an autopilot business, how to set it up. Put the framework in place so that you can start to separate yourself from your business and enjoy it running without you. Where the autopilot reality began for me and also my clients was an office fit out tradesman who attended one of my seminars in Sydney back in 2001. He wanted to buy a video store so it would operate without him. I talked him out of that. And the reason I talked him out of it was because I had a video store client and I found it a difficult and challenging business to grow. You couldn't triple the turnover of the business. Yes, it could operate without the owner having to work in it, but it wasn't an extremely profitable, high turnover business. However, I had worked with a kitchen renovation company before this meeting that I had with this potential client and I recommend that he buy one of those instead. He did find one for $110,000. He bought it for $35,000 of his own money and the other $35,000 was under vendor finance. And in the next 12 months, he fully systematized it with my assistance, hired a general manager using a recruitment system I had and an interviewing process. And this general manager happened to work for Coca-Cola. He got put off because he was considered old at 52 and he was looking for something to do and he was financially independent and it turned out he was very good at management and using the systems which he managed and facilitated he kept the business running very very smoothly and very profitably for two years while the owner didn't work in it at all and because the business owner at the time wanted to move to Queensland he sold up everything including his business and he ended up selling it for 10 times what he paid for it or five times the purchase price very successful outcome and a few other clients came along that wanted similar outcomes once I started talking to them about this potential and I met a stone floor restorer which I'd never heard of at the time he restored stone floors grinding polishing and sealing and he had one employee at the time and within a couple of years about 18 20 months he decided he wanted to move out of Sydney and move to Queensland in Collinsville where he would bought some properties he didn't think his business could run without him but I assured him that it could 
and he found that just by talking to his employees for 30 minutes every week, he that's all the time he needed to put into his business. And he was making $120,000 a year for working half an hour a week and worry-free. So he had a fantastic life. An electrician in Townsville, when I met him, he was working 80 hours a week and 10 months later was working zero hours a week. When I first met him, he said, Tim, I don't have time to talk to you, I'm too busy. And I said, would you prefer to be very productive and making a lot of progress with the potential of freeing up your time or are you happy still being busy? And that made him think and then he thought, no, I don't want to be busy for all the time. My wife is giving me a hard time because I don't have any time for family. Sounds like a good plan, let's, let's work. So we did. 10 months later, he completely stepped out of his business, moved his whole family to Cloncurry, which was about five or 600 kilometers away. So you can't be driving back to work. There's no flights from, from Cloncurry back to Townsville. So he stayed there and he was renovating houses and then he decided to travel around Australia for three years in a brand new 45 foot motor home and homeschooled his kids half a day and traveled the rest of the time. And that was a fantastic quality of life that he could have with his business running without him and enjoying a passive income from that business still operating in Townsville while he was traveling around Australia. So that's an example of what can happen when you put these things together that I'll be talking about in this webinar. So why I created this webinar? I'm saddened by what I've seen thousands of and they are business owners trapped running a busyness. I hope you're not one of the people that I meet that say, oh, I've got no time, I'm really busy right now. Um, I've heard that thousands of times from thousands of business owners telling me how busy they are all the time and yet they're making very little to no progress backed by numbers that they can substantiate within a six month time frame. And that's a bit sad considering how busy they are and nothing is really changing. So that saddens me. Self-employed people and few entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs own multiple businesses and don't work in any of them. They may work on them, but they don't work in any of those businesses. And that saddens me that people start a business and they never get to that entrepreneurial stage. I see, I've seen lots of workaholics working hard for decades. They're working 60, 80 hours a week. And they do it for decades, but financially, there's not much to show for it. They might be paying off an average home they don't have millions of dollars in assets though. They're just working hard just like everybody else, but they're, they're working harder because they're a small business owner. And I see lots of unmotivated business owners lacking vision. Vision is the, the clarity of your future that you want that pulls you forward, attracts you like a magnet so that you're motivated and driven and excited. And when business owners don't have a, they're not motivated, they lack that vision, that's all it is. So I want to take you on a little bit of an entrepreneurial journey or an experience of mindset to talk about this in a little bit more detail. So imagine for a moment you had the choice. Instead of working for the next month, you slept in tomorrow. And this, this little exercise started tomorrow. So imagine just sleeping in tomorrow, whatever day of the week it is. So imagine it's a, a weekday, you slept in tomorrow. Then when you did get up, you packed your bags and your families too, if you got kids and caught a plane to begin a seven-stop world holiday worry-free while your business ran without you. And you just simply started with Disney World. Fantastic place to go in Florida, USA. And that was your first trip, uh, first stop on your seven-stop trip. You stayed there for a few days because you were leisurely, no rush about this, take as much time as you like, and you decide to stay there for two or three days in that destination. And then you traveled north to Banff, an awesome destination, which is a place that I'd love to go to myself one day. It's a ski resort in Canada, fantastic location by the lake, excellent motel, fantastic skiing, and that's where you stay for the next few days. Then from there, you headed east and over to Europe, where you stopped off at the Greek islands, hired a bear boat, and did a bit of sailing, did a bit of traveling by boat, bit of fishing, bit of snorkeling, bit of diving maybe, and time on the beach, private beaches, and just got to hang out in beautiful weather, tropical water, clear, crystal clear blue water, and that was your next stopover. Then from there, you decided to head south to the Vatican to see the awesome architecture and the paintings 
of this magnificent place in Rome. And you stayed there for a couple of days to, to visit this, to really look in, spend some time just checking out the scenery there. From there, you decided to go south into Africa and go to a lion park where you got up close to the wildlife on your own private little trip, your own tour, and own safari if you like, and had an awesome time there and spent another week there. Now, funny enough, right now, one of my clients who owns a kitchen company in Brisbane is doing exactly this. He's in Africa right now with his family, and he went uh, last year as well, and he goes for four weeks. He just goes for four weeks. He's found that's a great time frame to go, travel over there, spend four weeks doing an African safari, seeing lots of wildlife and lots of animals, and that's exactly what he loves doing himself because his business runs without him having to be there all the time. And now your next stop is the Taj Mahal in India. What a fantastic place to go and see this magnificent wonder of the world. And that was your next stop over. Then from there you went south to the Maldives and you had your own private bungalow right on the ocean. And you had your own private swimming pool out the front which you could swim in or... Just rest in, relax in, have a few drinks, or go swimming in the ocean. Snorkeling, diving, fishing, whatever it is that you like to do, and that's where you spend the next couple of weeks or so. The question is, do you have the choice, and more importantly, would you like the choice to be able to do things like this on holiday for two months of the year, every year, worry-free? The business owners I tend to work with and talk to, they're taking four weeks off a year holiday and it's usually right at the end of the year when it's really quiet. They don't take holidays off when they choose to any time of the year. They're typically taking it the quiet times because their business won't run very smoothly or very profitably without them. So that's my question to you. Are you motivated? Are you excited? Do you have this vision in your mind of being this person that has choices in your life where working is optional and how many months off you want to take and when you take them off is completely a choice. And if it's not now, is it something that you would love to have instead of working? You can see this fantastic earth that we live on and see it and go travel places with your family, your loved ones, whenever you like. To me, that's the critical question. It all comes down to what motivates you, what drives you. And I find that Our society doesn't put enough emphasis on that, and that's why I'm talking about that right now. So time is a challenge. Life's too short to be working. You can either spend time, which I find that most people in our society are spending time. It's like money, you spend it, it's gone. Working in their business, you can work in your business and spend time, or you can invest time and work on it to work your way out of it. And then working becomes optional. So it's definitely a choice. And you start small. You start in very, very tiny increments. You start working on your business in small amounts and then you'll find that the rewards are so great, it'll motivate you to want to do more work on your business till in the end you're working on your business three days a week. And once you get to that stage, now you're not far off starting to work your way completely out of it. So you just start by starting that's that's all you gotta do you just gotta start working on your business with some of the things I'll be giving you here today. So setting up your business to run an autopilot, you'll need a general manager or supervisor to run your business. And that begins with understanding what is management. Unfortunately very few business owners have learned anything much about the subject of management. They know all about their industry, but if they ran a business completely out of their business out of their industry as the manager of that business, they may not be able to grow up very, very successfully. So it's not about industry knowledge, it's about understanding the subject of what management actually is. So it's not just industry specific knowledge, it's not technical knowledge, and that can help. But some industries don't even require that in a general manager. I've hired quite a lot of general managers over the years with clients, businesses, and like the kitchen renovation company, that was the first business I helped to assist with hiring a general manager. And the guy had run Coca-Cola. He knew nothing about kitchens. Didn't Had nothing to do with building it as an industry. Had no idea. But he didn't need to because we systematized the business. He knew management as a subject. So management is not something you learn from being in your industry for 10 years. That's not learning management. That's learning technical aspects of how to do technical work in an industry. That's not management. 
So when you don't understand management, you hire what you think is a general manager and it turns out they're not a general manager and they're not good at running your business and the business declines or starts to go backwards if you hire the wrong type of person, what you think may be a good general manager. I could give you a lot of examples. I won't go into that now, but I've had clients who I'd recommended they put off their general managers because they thought they were good. And when I started to illustrate why they weren't a good general manager, when they put them off, their business improved immediately afterwards and it started to continue to improve from the strategies that I was introducing to them and they started to not have to work in their business. And some of those clients didn't need a general manager, but they definitely needed a supervisor. So understanding more about management is a critical step that so few business owners take when they want to step out of their business. They hire what they think is a good general manager or they promote an employee up to the role and the business does not run well with those people in that role. And that's their biggest mistake and a very, very expensive mistake when you're handing over an asset to someone that really doesn't understand management. So let's talk about that first. There are three core skills of management and McDonald's mastered these three skills over decades. You can read about that in a book called Under the Golden Arches. It's all about the growth of McDonald's over many decades. Now, the book doesn't spell out these three core skills, but they are the three core skills that they focused on. The first one is people skills. Now, in business, we don't really learn a lot about people. We don't learn how to influence them. We don't learn about personality types. We don't learn about selling to them. There's a lot of skills that most business owners are not really learning. So that's a critical score, core skill in business because your employees are people, your customers are people, your suppliers are people. You're one of the people. Why aren't we learning psychology before we go into the business environment? It's just crazy that we don't learn more about people. So that's the first essential skill of management is learning that skill. The second one is measuring, understanding what numbers mean and which numbers are critical in a business environment to hold employees accountable. Understanding how to read a P&L, understanding what markup is, what margin is, what margin you need to sell at, what prices you need to sell all your products or services at with a minimum gross margin to make the minimum gross profit necessarily to cover your expenses. Do you know how to do that? Because because less than 1% of business owners I've met have a system for doing that. That's an example of measuring. And the third skill that we need in management is systems. Understanding how to create them. And they're digital these days. They're not documented. They're digital. They could be a spreadsheet. They could be a PowerPoint. They could be video. They could be audio. There are so many different ways to create systems. So they're digital, digitized intellectual property, if you like. And when, when you combine all three of these skills, you make people accountable to numbers and you're measuring to show the people dramatic improvements in profits and responsibility of employees starts to kick in. That's the beginning of setting up a business on autopilot. And when you're measuring, you, you're verifying the use of systems by the people and you know if people are using the systems or not because the numbers show that they're not. So the people become accountable to systems and also numbers and you can see that people are using the systems when you've created them and you have them in place and you're monitoring people's performance by numbers, then you know they're doing what they should. So when you put all three of these skills into a business, and I'll talk about how you do that very soon, you'll find that magic starts to happen. This is the beginning of setting up a business to run on autopilot. And without these three essential skills that we need to learn as business owners, you often take a very, very big risk if you start to step out of a business with someone else running it. So I'll talk about this in a little bit more depth. So combining these skills transforms busyness into high profit margin businesses running on autopilot. And McDonald's started off with expensive chefs and then they learned from those expensive employees what systems they needed to create. They quantified how long they took to do certain tasks, systematized what those tasks were, and then slowly lowered the the skills of people that they needed to hire. And that is an example. And that's not the only way. You can't replace qualified people with unqualified people. I'm not suggesting that for a second, but this moves you in a direction where your systems become very, very powerful in how they're managing your people and they're verified by measuring. All right, so essential skills, people skills and management. I want to touch on some of these because these are unfortunately skills that a lot of people are lacking as business owners and it's critical to have these skills. The first one is identifying great attitude people. 
Can you identify a person with a great attitude within five or 10 questions or five or 10 minutes of meeting them? Because that's an essential skill. A lot of profits have lost in a business with poor attitude people that are identified months after they were hired, sometimes many months after they were hired or a year or two. A lot of business owners have bad attitude people that have worked for them for two or three or five years and they still haven't put them off because they don't understand how critical that skill is of understanding attitudes of people and they've got dead weight pulling the morale down hurting the business and they just don't let them go so that's a critical skill to have in business knowing trustworthy people within minutes of meeting that's another one there are some people that are honest as the day is long there are some people that you wouldn't trust uh, <laughs> trust with anything and my question is, can you identify which type of person you are dealing with trustworthy-wise when you first meet them? Because that is critical to know in business. Are they trustworthy or are they untrustworthy? You need to have that skill of identifying that within minutes of meeting or talking to one of these people. Another critical people skill is selling more and at higher prices than competitors. If the majority of your sales you are winning because you're the cheapest, that should worry you. <laughs> it shouldn't impress you. You should be very worried that you're winning more sales and nearly all of them are cheaper than competitors. You, you don't win the race of an autopilot business by being cheaper than anyone else because if you're cheaper most of the time, it means you're not making the margin. Therefore, you don't have enough cash in your bank to start to fund the extra employees to run your business without you. So that's an essential skill in business. And people think you can't do this. Well, that's complete nonsense. You can. Everything is easy when you know how. So selling at a higher price than your competitors is something you can definitely do. It's a combination of selling skills and marketing skills. You attract really good quality people that will pay a higher price with your marketing and then the selling process gets fairly easy from there. Most people's marketing is so bad or so poor that they don't attract the great quality people. Therefore, it's all dependent on price and that's why they're not converting at a higher price. The next one is effective teaching skills, being able to effectively leverage your time by teaching people what it is that you do. And it doesn't matter how good you think you are at something, you can teach that skill to someone else. You can definitely teach problem solving skills and intelligence, a way of problem solving that can be definitely taught. So that's a critical skill to learn as well. Identifying aptitudes of people before hiring them. I'll talk about that soon. There are certain aptitudes of round pegs in round holes and knowing the difference between which employees are best to do which tasks in a business, that's a, an incredibly beneficial skill to have to match that, that aptitude that people have to certain roles in a business. And when you match them, they excel, they do fantastic. And sometimes by swapping a person from one role to another it dramatically improves their productivity. So it's not an attitude problem, it's an aptitude problem. They're, they're working on on tasks or in roles that don't suit their personality type. That's a critical skill to have. Leadership skills are the next one. Identifying and training supervisors. Who are the best people to promote into those supervising or managing roles so that you start to free up your time? That's a critical skill to have and then teach them how to be leaders as well. Next one is a deep understanding of various personality profiles and out of all the things that I've trained business owners on now for 19 years and thousands of business owners there's one subject that they've said Tim that the best thing I ever learned from you in all the months that I've worked with you is and it's this subject I'm about to introduce to you right now the best people skill to study is something called disc profiles and you may be aware of it but maybe you haven't actually taken it to the full extent of the benefits you can get from really, really learning it. So people tend to be more outgoing or more reserved. If they're more outgoing, they're like a runner. They can jump and take off in a certain direction and change direction and be moving very, very quickly, changing directions all the time. And that's what we call the outgoing people. Then we have reserved people that are more like ocean liners, not in a rush, but they're very methodical. They've got a lot of momentum and they stick to a course. They don't change directions rapidly. They don't accelerate and decelerate and change directions rapidly. That's more the reserved people. So the outgoing people are more than multitaskers, do a lot of things, change focuses quickly and juggle lots of balls in the air. They're what we call the dominant or influence profiles. The reserved profiles are what we call compliant or steady. 
And then we have another way of distinguishing people, which is if they're more task oriented, more independent, they're what we call the dominant or compliant. And if they're more people oriented, then they're more influence or steady oriented. Now, this profile has been in the world since about the 1920s. Dr. Mars had really developed it and refined it as a methodology of understanding people's behavior. Unfortunately, it hasn't been taught. It's been commercialized where if you want to learn about it, you buy a report. But you can study it, which is what I train people on, and then master it, and then spectacular improvements in businesses result from learning it yourself, not just buying reports from it. And here's an example. This mechanic's profits jump by 50% in just one week. By disprofiling my team and talking about it in a team meeting, my guy's productive hours went up 50% the next week. So they got 50% more work done in the next week after disprofiling his team and talking about it in a team meeting. It makes that much difference in a business when you disprofile all of your team and then talk about it, which means you learn about it. You just don't buy reports on everyone and pay a lot of money for it and pay $1,000 for five employees' reports. That's not learning it. That's analyzing it. That's theoretical learning. I mean, learning about it from someone like myself that teaches you to understand it then gives you specific reading information on each profile and then talking about that with your team. That's the potential that can happen when you start introducing this. They get happier from having this discussion about who they are as a person and that's what motivates people. Happy people are more productive. So this is a fantastic strategy I recommend you investigate and start to study. So the next skill I want to talk about, that was a bit on people skills, and that's the best thing you can learn in business, second to none, I believe. The next thing to learn about is measuring, and how do you actually measure and manage your business? If you think about it, business is really three things. It's about winning work. You've got to get the sale. That's winning the work. Then you have to do the work, which is the outcome of the sale. That's the doing part. And then you need to be paid for the work that you do as well, and that's the cash coming in from the work. So it's a three-step or three aspects of how to run a business. And ideally, well, not so much ideally, what needs to happen is all three need to pretty much balance. If you won the work, you gotta do the work, you gotta get paid for the work. So that's three separate areas of a business that we're really managing and measuring. When you're measuring, you're managing to see what the business is doing. So imagine it's like a stool that needs to be in balance where you're sitting on that stool and you like it to be horizontal so that you're not falling off the stool. And now you're trying to balance on that. And the way to to check the balance of a business is to look at the sales dollar figure as a leg. So let's say that we're turning over $1 million a year in a business. That means that about weekly, that would be a million dollars divided by say 50 weeks. It's about $20,000. So by measuring the sales acceptances coming in every week, we want to see $20,000 as the figure. Then we want to see if we've also produced $20,000 worth of work. Now produced does not mean finished. You might take six months to finish a job that might be worth $200,000. Well, I'm not talking about whether it's finished or not. I'm talking about the amount of work produced each week. So it's like the dollar value of work produced, finished or unfinished, that's production. We're not talking about invoices, we're talking about purely production dollars. So we need to see how much work we're getting through compared to how much work we've won. That's the production dollars. And the third leg we want to be measuring is the cash being banked. How much have we banked? If we've got a million dollar business and we're banking $10,000, we're going to have a cash flow problem because we're producing $20,000 $20,000 worth of work, we're selling $20,000 worth, we need to be banking $20,000 worth to be able to pay the overheads in running the business. So measuring all three of those legs, that's measuring, that's managing your business. So measuring and monitoring all three weekly identifies early causes of challenges and stress. Now, I guarantee you, I'll bet you a $10,000 that no business that had problems after the business owner stepped out was measuring all three of these legs. People just don't do this. They don't measure all three. And from working with thousands of business owners and asking thousands of business owners if they're measuring things like their conversion rate and their sales acceptances and their production dollars and their cash flow, I can tell you out of the thousands of business owners I've talked to, not one is measuring all three legs. Not one out of thousands of businesses I've asked these questions to. They might measure two of them, they might measure one of them, but they don't measure all three, and they certainly don't measure them weekly. 
So they're lacking this balance of managing their business and that's the stress that they run with. They're stressing about too much work. They're stressing about not enough work. They're stressing about not getting enough work done. They're stressing about not enough money in the bank. All these things is what the majority of things are that business owners stress about and it's ignorance is causing the stress. If you measure all these three things, legs you stop stressing because your business becomes more predictable you're now managing your business you now know where you need to concentrate your energy yourself whether it's increasing sales or it's increasing productivity or it's increasing how much you're banking you know that because you see the numbers every week and that's critical to be really managing a business properly and if you're not doing this and you step out (laughs) The risk you're taking is enormous. You cannot look at a P&L once a month and have any idea of how to manage your business and what's really going on. The P&L is hindsight. It's telling you what happened one to two or three months previously. It's not telling you what's happening every week. So if your leads are down for four weeks in a row, you've got no idea that your leads are down four weeks in a row from looking at a P&L. You just don't know that. You've got no idea. So how do you know that you're overstaffed and you're about to chew up cash if you're not tracking your sales acceptances every week. You got no idea. So that's why you need to track it every week and see these trends. So when you start putting measuring tools like this particular one that I built and I give my clients, you start to see the three legs every week compared to the next three weeks. So you see historically what the trend of your business is in sales, what the trend of your business in productivity is, what the trend of your business of cash in the bank is, and you're looking at it every four weeks previously. And that's what you're seeing here is these vertical bar graphs. The green is sales dollars. So the wide green band over on the left, you can see the scale. So it's got a dotted line horizontal. It's at about the 7,800 mark. That 7,800 mark is where the benchmark minimum turnover of the business has to be. And you can see the green, the wide green band is the sales dollars. And you can see it's starting to increase. You can see the production in the middle is the wide blue band. You can see the cash is the band on the right. Now, from looking at these figures, and not so much the figures, I'm just looking at the shapes of the graph, the narrow green band on the left is leads. And you can see that the sales acceptances for the last two weeks are higher than what our benchmark is and production's about where it should be. So our sales have exceeded what our production capacity is, which is starting to indicate what? It's starting to indicate that we need to hire someone in production. And what supports that is the fact that the leads have skyrocketed. The number of leads that have increased is quite dramatic in the narrow green band. So four weeks in a row, we've had an increase and our sales have increased. What does that say? It says you definitely need to hire someone right now because your sales are supporting the extra work that needs to be done. So this business needs to hire someone right now. Now, to me, that's obvious because of my experience. But to most people, they wouldn't see that from just looking at a bunch of numbers. So having someone mentor you through the meaning of numbers, whatever way you're measuring is fine. But understanding what the numbers mean, that's a completely different story. So in this, by looking at this, because I built this tool and you're putting numbers in every week, it tracks certain KPIs, key performance indicators that help you to manage the business. So stepping out makes your business very predictable. And if you don't have a predictable business when you're not there, just from looking at some numbers, you are blindly trusting people. That's a massive risk. You want to see the numbers of people and their performance all the time. And that's what this, this simple bar graph tool does. That's why my clients love this when they step out of their business. So this is making your business very predictable. And without this predictability and seeing the trends every week, you're just guessing. And if you're guessing and you're stepping out of a business, leave someone else to guess, and they know that your business less than what you do and what what it's doing, that's just a massive risk. And that's why you can step out of a business safely when you're seeing these trends. And you just put five figures into this and it bar graphs it and drops off the previous week. So you're looking at week 9, 10, 11, and 12 here. Then this tool summarizes those four weeks and put that into a month and compares it to the last three months. So you can see this incredible trend all the time of exactly what your business is doing, but more importantly, what your business needs. Does it need more sales? Does it need more cash in a bank? Does it need more production? What's it need? It's easy to tell. Look at the numbers. And... The idea of this tool is to print out this page, which fits on a page, and take these numbers into a weekly team meeting, which we've just talked about. 
getting together once a week and talking about numbers and systems with your team, that's combining the three skills of management and business, people skills, measuring and systems. So printing this out, taking these numbers into your team, a lot of business owners are worried about telling their team certain numbers. You should be the opposite. You should be constantly telling them numbers of your business because that's how you create accountability. When you tell your team nothing about numbers, you don't create accountability. Nothing makes people more accountable more accountable, sorry, than a number. Look at the Olympic Games and all the numbers that get generated from competitive environments. Numbers motivate people. So you definitely want to be showing them numbers. And these are the best numbers that I've found that there's others as well, but these are the best numbers that you need to show your employees every week in a once a week team meeting, get together and have a chat. So this is how you start to step out of a business and make it safe to run without you. So the most critical goal for an autopilot business is getting your business's net profit margin up. And if you double the net profit percentage, you double the net profit. That's what we're trying to do. Now, unfortunately, by looking at hundreds of businesses' profit loss statements over a three-year time frame, I've found that less than 10% of businesses that are at $700,000 turnover or more are over 10%. Now, 10% is um, considered good by a lot of people. I've found that, no, it's nowhere near good. 15% is the minimum. I think every business needs to be at once their turnover is at 700,000. Irrespective of whether you're a manufacturer or service business, you definitely need to be over that. If you're retail, you should be at least 20. Retail needs to be higher. And so if your businesses are anywhere near that, so 90% of businesses um, are under 10% I've found. And when they're low, that means they don't have much cash in the bank. And if you don't have much cash in the bank, you can't afford a general manager. You can't afford the extra person that's going to replace you in the business. That's why I said at the start, 90% of businesses cannot afford to step out and set their business up to run on autopilot because there's no cash in the bank to be able to afford to pay an extra person that, and you not being productive in the business. You just can't afford it. So getting your margins up is a critical step in achieving that autopilot goal. So increasing net profit margins by measuring. Let's take a simple way of looking at a business. Simplicity is a good way of looking at it. Let's say we've got a $1 million turnover business and we apply the Pareto principle of 80% of what you do isn't that profitable, 20% is. That's pretty common. So what we're going to do is split the business by income and compare that to profit margin. So let's say we've got 80% of our turnover isn't that profitable and it's got a 3% net profit margin. Well, that would mean 800,000 times 3% gives us $24,000 in net profit from doing that activity. And 20% of the turnover is at 12% net profit margin, which when you multiply that gives you the same net profit. So it's like working four days a week to make the same money as what you make in one day a week. And this is extremely common for the majority of businesses. They're not making much profit on the bulk of what they do and they make good profit on a minority of what they do. It's actually very common. So when you add the two together, you get what the P&L would show you, $48,000 net profit. It doesn't really tell you it's a 4.8% net profit margin, funny enough, but that's what the figure would be. Now, if these were your figures and I'd shown you how to measure your business and shown you that you have these numbers, what would you think right now? Would you be excited by that? Would you be a bit surprised? Would you be motivated? I was hoping you would have a response to seeing these numbers right now. Now, I found that when I do show business owners and I give you the actual measuring tool that breaks down the margin on everything that you sell, when you categorize it into types of things that you sell like we have here, certain things start to happen. And I found that by showing business owners how to measure their productivity, which is what this is, and segmenting it into categories to see different margins on different things that they sell, it gives us an incredible insight on where opportunities are to increase those margins. So six months later, or over the next six months, there's a number of strategies that I would like this business to implement. The first one would be a price rise. The business needs to raise its prices. When I see 4.8% net profit margin, it usually means it's way overdue for a price rise. It hasn't introduced many price rises or there's a whole lot of fear of losing too many sales with a price rise. Now, the fear of losing sales can be offset with conversion rate strategies and retention strategies. There's dozens and dozens of strategies you can do to increase conversion rates 
And I don't mean by two or three percent, I mean 20 to 50 to 300 percent using methodology that's proven. That's that's the result I'm seeing with clients. Minimum 20% in a month, typically 50%, sometimes 100 to or 300% increase in turnover by increasing conversion rates or increasing retention rates by keeping people, getting people to come back more often what they are. So you can offset that very, very easy potential loss of price. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that if you go to a website and you put a, a big splash page on the home page and really emphasize a specialization of what it is that you perform as a service, and let's say in this case it was that 12% net profit margin type of service, if you specialize in that and really promote your ex- excellent skills and the way that you do that and really put some emphasis on you being experts of that, that niche of service, you'll find that you get a lot more sales from it. In fact, you can get so many sales that you can turn that 20% of turnover into 80% of turnover by really promoting that. Chasing up work, the phone rings and someone that wants that 12% net profit margin type of service perform, you chase that. You're the first to quote, you're the first to price, you follow up on quotes, you do your best to try and win that type of job. By doing this and really focusing on this area, it's not hard to turn that 20% into 80% volume and because I've achieved this dozens or probably hundreds of times with businesses over the years it's not very hard to do that by using these sort of strategies now combined with the price rise we get a little bit higher profit margin we can now get our 8 20% to our 80% at a 15% net profit margin now we're making $120,000 from that and the 3% I don't think you'd even bother to do at 3% it's like you're almost making a loss at 3% net profit margin so we want to be a minimum 5% net profit margin on that. So just by combining these two and transitioning the business away from 80% of work that's not that profitable, making 80% the profitable aspect, we make a massive difference to the net profit and therefore net profit margin of the business. So on this million dollar turnover business, we've just increased the net profit by about $80,000, $82,000 without even increasing turnover. Now, This comes from knowing how to measure and seeing the profit opportunities with a combination of strategies and experience. This is the potential of so many different businesses. Now, I've used really conservative numbers. You might think this is rocket science just because we've almost tripled the net profit of the business. It's actually not. (laughs) It's not rocket science because I've been doing this over and over and over for hundreds of business, with hundreds of businesses for many years. Let me give you a case study example of this exact process with a guy called Milton. Milton runs a company called MJ United Plumbing and Drainage and still still continues to do so. When I first met him and looked at his P&L, his P&L for the last financial year was $750,000 and he had a net profit margin of a very common, very standard 6%. By introducing team building, he straight away had happier employees and everyone knows that happy people are more productive people. So that's a profit margin increasing strategy as it was for that mechanic whose productivity increased 50% in a week. We also measured gross margins of the business by job type and we segmented types of jobs like is it a changing a tap, is it um, changing a water heater. So we just segmented the business into types considered labor as a cost of sale and then started to see the true gross margins like the previous slide of checking gross margins. Measuring revealed losses on some types of jobs because if you're only running a 6% net profit margin, you probably have a range from minus five or minus 10 up to plus 10 plus 15. So you typically always have losses in there without even knowing it if your average is under 10%. And that's exactly what we found here with Milton's business by measuring using the measuring tool that I supplied, he found that he was running at a loss on some of his jobs. His conversion rates had room for improvement because he was only converting at 30% on new leads, or he was actually a bit under 30% on new leads, and he was only 50% on existing leads or existing clients. From my experience, that says that's low. It should be up like 40%, 45% on new leads. That's a potential you can get to pretty much in all industries when when you start to apply some simple strategies. After working with Milton, he used a system that we supply to sell at a minimum gross margin so we control gross margins at the time of sale, including labor, which is critical. 
We focus winning more high margin jobs with conversion rate strategies and disk profiles is something that Milton learnt and studied and applied intensely and takes a couple of months to really learn it to get it into your mind so you can start to identify which disk profiles you're talking to. Is turnover by increasing conversion rates and by putting the price rises in place went to a million dollars, but more importantly, his net profit margin went from 6% to 18. Massive increase. What he said was that added $120,000 cash to his bank account in just one quarter by putting all these strategies in place. More importantly, Milton felt completely de-stressed and stopped thinking about his business at home completely. When he went home, that was it. He stopped thinking about work completely. Seven key ingredients of setting up an autopilot business. These ingredients are a formula to set your business up to run an autopilot. If you skip any of these seven, I found that you don't tend to get much result. People want the shortcut. Well, this is the shortcut. So a lot of business owners come and come to me and say, Tim, I need more sales. And when I ask them why they want more sales, they say, so I can have more cash in the bank. Okay, well, you don't have to increase sales to increase cash in the bank. Like the example I gave you a few slides ago where we took a million dollar business, we did not increase the turnover at all, yet we tripled the net profit of the business. Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So when people say, I want to increase my sales, I'll say, how many have you got now? I start talking about measuring questions. I'll say, well, if you're not making the net profit margin you need to now, why are we increasing sales? Increasing sales does not increase net profit margin in 90% of businesses' cases. You need to do other things to increase net profit margin because businesses get more inefficient as they grow, net profit margins go down as they grow, therefore increasing sales is not a way to get more cash in the bank. So we need to introduce measuring before we talk about sales and marketing. We need to then plan to achieve the goals that we want to achieve, which might be an autopilot business. It might be doubling the profit. It might be adding a million dollars to the turnover. What are the strategies we need to do to achieve that? And that's what the planning phase is. And before we're implementing the explosive growth sales and marketing strategies to an increased turnover, we want systems in place for the next employees we need to hire so that the systems are done before we get busy and not, before, not afterwards. Now prior to measuring, I found that if you want to get all your team accountable to numbers, you need to make them happier, more receptive to changes. And the way to do that is start running team meetings. Maybe you need to hire a better attitude employee or two or three. That may be part of it as well. So I found that by implementing team building before you introduce numbers and getting your team to be involved with time tracking and numbers and conversion rates, and etc. We need to make your team happier with team building. And prior to team building, we need to motivate you, business owner. And the best way to do that is to clarify your vision of what you're trying to achieve. So by clarifying your vision of what you're trying to achieve and start talking about entrepreneurial thinking, entrepreneurial mindset, and dreams and goals and vision of the future, it gets you motivated. From your motivation, we take that into team meetings. We talk about some of those goals for the business now. By doing that, the team get more receptive to measuring. So now we can introduce measuring a lot more, a lot easier. And when we measure, we find the strategies, the profit leaks, the profit opportunities that are obvious from measuring. And then we start to use strategies to plan to achieve your goals that we set in step one. While we're working on the plan and evolving the strategies and learning about the strategies, we're putting systems in place, job descriptions, organizational chart, determining KPIs for every role in your business, things like that. With those systems in place, now we're ready to hire people as the business starts to grow, go through explosive growth stage, which is what sales and marketing strategies can achieve. And then we're ready to move into the management, the final phase of the business for you, so that we're getting out of all the repetitious work, we're working in the management area of the business and we're starting to set the business up to run without you. So that's the seven step ingredient process I found. It's like a J curve, it starts slow and then accelerates like Milton. His business didn't do much for the first three months. The next three or four months, he added $120,000 cash to his bank, in, bank account from the strategies that kicked in. Which would you prefer to reach autopilot? Spend years learning about people, measuring systems, and then integrating all three to increase net profit margins to one day afford a general manager? 
Then spend years learning all about management reports necessary for your business to run on autopilot safely. Then pay an expert to determine KPIs for all employees and a general managers, then try to hire a good one and doing all this yourself or work smarter with a shortcut. The fact is all business owners need people skills, measuring methods, systems and great strategies if they want to grow their business to have some freedom and choices in life. Instead of expensive one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can learn it all in a small group with some one-on-one -on -one included. It's smarter, faster, and a much more affordable investment. So let me introduce you to the Academy of Business Mastery. It's a full training course with done-for-you systems that you can simply drop into your business within an hour or two and be using them straight away. You haven't got to create your own systems. That's the problem with business coaching as an industry. You have a chat to a coach and then you realize all these things that you need to do and you've got to spend the next 20 hours a week trying to implement all this stuff because you've got to create half of it. That's the problem with the industry. So thanks to all the experience I've got for 19 years of working with business owners and hearing the same problems from all these different business owners with staff, with money, with time, with growth, I found that I can systematize all that and then give people finished systems ready to drop into their business. So you get nine workbooks complete with done for you systems, measuring tools and training to have a business cash cow running on autopilot without you where working is optional. It's a choice if you want to work. That's fantastic. Keep working. But if you want to take a month or two off any time because you can, that's a different that's a different story. That's where all these tools and measuring systems and complete done for you systems come into their own imagine getting all these a system for team building hiring and motivation the best 155 proven strategies and the top 50 best strategies for specifically your business right now a PL review to work out your minimum gross margin sale prices and then a quoting tool or pricing tool to quote accurately using that minimum gross margin. All the measuring tools supplied and customized to measure leads, sales, marketing, production and cash flow with advice on these measuring tools and setup and review of your business's numbers. All that's included in the course. Other included systems and strategies are complete done for you systems for team building to take your business through the five stages of team building and the fifth stage is where your team will start to run your business for you where you don't need to be there. It takes about six months to get to that point and a lot of our attendees are at that point by the end of the training. Training on how to set KPIs for all employees. You need to have KPIs for all the employees in your business. And we'll show you how to do that as a fallout of the measuring tools that we're giving you in step three. We'll be talking about KPIs at step five. Cash boosting strategies to afford a general manager. You must have plenty of cash in the bank before you take that final step. A powerful tool to plan the growth of your business and double your profits inside 12 months. It's not hard to increase profits in a business. In fact, with the strategies that you'll be using and learning, it's easier to double profit than what it is to double sales. And doubling profit is far more powerful and beneficial than what it is just doubling sales. A full recruitment system for a general manager from the ad to the interview questions and there are pages of them, they're not two or three or five. You've got to ask a lot of questions to really qualify a person for a general manager role. So you get all of that content, that full system. You also get a job description and KPIs for a general manager identified in the training. That is extremely valuable. Those two points alone are probably worth $10,000 from an HR company if you could find one that had the experience to help you with that. Included in the course are nine workbooks full of wisdom to read and refer to for years as my clients do when I follow them up years later. They say they're still reading the workbooks because there's so much depth and scope of content that goes beyond where you are right now. 49 done for you templates and spreadsheets that are all emailed to you that are yours to keep forever. Seven top marketing books. The best marketing books I can find in various different categories are all included in the course. 
four hours of one-on-one -on -one individual phone support time where we talk about your P&L customization, look at your chart of accounts, discuss why it may need and usually does need changing to optimize it to improve it plus how to set up and customize all the measuring tools for your business so you're measuring those three-legged stools like we talked about earlier. A system for pricing to control your gross and net profit margins at the time of sale. Business profit share calculation spreadsheet. So if one day you'd like to set up profit sharing with all of your employees, which I do recommend and discuss in the seventh step on management, you already have that tool built for you, ready to use with full instructions, video training, everything. And you also have answers to any and all your business related questions for the full seven months. You can ask questions at any time on any subject by email, by phone, by, by our group training environment. And it is an ideal training environment. I've found the best way to educate business owners is in a small group environment, delivered online in like a video conference platform. So we meet half a day every fortnight. I found that's a perfect time frame to be training people. Online, it's like a video conference and that's conducted every second week, every fortnight for seven months. So we discuss specific challenges with staff, with measuring, with growing your business, things like that. And you get the systems that are given to you at the end of every session after we've discussed how to implement them. Then we review them in our next session and you get all the support with that as well. Plus, all sessions are recorded so you can review it for years. And if you happen to miss a session because you're overseas, that's fine. You can either tune in while you're overseas because you can access it, the training group anywhere in the world as long as you have internet access. Or if you are away, which sometimes happens, then you just catch up by watching the session that you have recorded for you. The value in the Academy is simply extraordinary. Get 52 hours of live interactive online training. You get four one hour phone and video calls. They can be in, a, in the same platform, a one-on-one -on -one video conference. Seven months of email support, 24 hour responses. Nine workbooks and video training instructions. There are a lot of videos that comes with all the content. All the measuring tools come with video instructions, which is fantastic when you pass it on to someone else. You delegate using those measuring tools to put data into. You just pass on the video that goes with it. A complete team building and recruitment system. So try and buy a recruitment system anywhere in the world and you'll be doing really well if you can actually find one. Because I've helped hundreds of businesses to recruit great attitude people with the qualifying questions to identify great attitude, the disk profiling tools to identify the best aptitude, all that is in this system. That's that's about a five to ten thousand dollar system if I wanted to sell that individually in the marketplace. Not to mention the five stages of team building, how to take your team through the five stages where at the fifth stage they start asking you not to come into work anymore because you're in their way and they work better without you. That's the beginning of that autopilot outcome. 39 pages of disk profile content tools and training that one of my clients who grew his business from six million turnover when I first met him to 39 million dollars turnover. 10 years later said I would value that disk profile content at $5,000 because that allowed me to grow my business by millions of dollars in turnover and set it up to run without me with really high sales conversion rates. And that was just those 39 pages. So it gives you an idea of the value of that content and how powerful it is. 50 plus strategies identified for your business and I recommend implementing one strategy per month. And you've got about five years worth of strategies for you and or your manager to implement with just understanding what those strategies are for your business in the course. A complete suite of management measuring tools that an independent financial controlling company that offers financial services for businesses to business owners from small to medium businesses. They looked at all the tools from the analysis and the operations tool and they valued that at $10,000. You get that included in this training as well, the full suite of management measuring tools. So no business co training or coaching or mentoring program you'll find anywhere in the world comes close to giving you all this content with all this done for you systems, all the workbooks, all the video training, measuring tools, recruit. You don't get all this in any course anywhere in the world. So there's nothing like this in the world for what the value is that you're getting all in this academy. So the Academy of Business Mastery course, the value of this course is well over $36,000, which is the price that top business coaches are charging. 
in Australia. Some are charging $48,000 for a year for one-on-one -on -one training. All that content isn't as comprehensive as what's in the academy. So you can see the value of this straight away. So I'm looking for three smart business owners who want to save a fortune compared to that price and to join in my next training group. The next Academy of Business Mastery kicks off in a couple of weeks. Dates will be advised. The course is held in half day sessions at the same time every second week. As I said, the first month's payment confirms your place and you simply pay as you go. The first three to register with a deposit get the course spots, but I need to check you qualify and talk to you first about your business's profit potential and see if you're ready in mindset, if you like, to attend the course as well. Some people aren't. And that's okay. If you're not ready for it, I'm happy to talk to you about what other things you need to do, which are a very, very high value that can get your business to that point where you will be ready. And so not everyone can attend it. And that's, I'm just being honest. It, it doesn't suit some businesses. There's some that I don't think they'll get the value from. Very, very few. Um, and there's some that are just simply not ready for it. And I'll talk about why they're not ready as well. And that's okay. Like I help people whatever the stage they're at in growing their business. You want your business to run on autopilot, possibly 12 months from now, depending on where you're at now, then this is the opportunity. So there is a minimum criteria for eligibility for the training. I'd like you to have been in business for at least three years and your turnover is at least 500,000 minimum. Plus you must have a great attitude. That's my eligibility minimum requirements uh, that I put out in public. There might be some things that I talk about privately that may mean that you're not quite ready. Or if you're beyond that, that's fantastic. You, you may be perfectly suited. So if you check the first step of eligibility, I'd like you to go there and just fill in some background details, just a little basic overview of your business. Give me a rough idea of your turnover, a rough idea of your size, uh, your URL, things like that. Just basic things like that. So we can have a chat. And that's all I want to do the first step. I'm not going to hard sell anyone. I've learned years ago, long, long time ago, that um, I, there are people that I can't always work with. So I don't push people into these courses. I have to check with them, talk to them, have a chat to them, see if they're eligible, make sure we both agree it's a good step. And then we'll talk about price and what you got to do to get it on the way. So that's the first step. So go there, wprofits.tv forward slash apply and you'll see some basic information just put in your details there and then I'll be in contact very very soon after who can have an autopilot business maybe you're asking that question maybe you're wondering if you can in your business the owners of these businesses took two months off and that's my simple definition of what an autopilot business is you can take two months off go overseas if you like choose whether you want to work at all or not, have nothing to do with your business, no connection to it, no phone calls, and still have a good profitable business when you come back. That's a simple definition. So these are some of the firms that and companies that I work with that have achieved that outcome where the owner is taking two months off. From accounting firms, some of the ones I've mentioned here today, even optometrists, joinery companies, traffic control, takeaway food shops, all sorts of industries can achieve this ultimate outcome. So why can't you in your business and in your industry. I have just one final question for you. What's your choice for your future? I recommend you don't delay your decision to talk to me by applying on the website below because procrastination is the killer of dreams. Thanks and all the best with your entrepreneurial shortcut to success.